Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with another Cinema 4D tutorial about the new color chooser in R17. So the color chooser or color picker has been completely rebuilt and you can do a lot with it. There's lots of options for it, setting up color palettes and all sorts of fun stuff with colors. So let's hop into Cinema 4D and let's take a look. And here we are in R17. Well, there's nothing for us to look at, so let's make a new material so we have something to talk about and we can get into this new color chooser. Now, when we open up a material, you notice that the material editor has a lot more buttons and switches. And what's going on here is we can control what's on this top part with either this color wheel, and you can pick your colors this way or pull the brightness, darkness down. You can grab this little one, which I like to use pretty often. And you can even grab colors from a picture, which we'll get into in a minute. And for these bottom sliders, you can grab RGB, hue, saturation, value, or even degrees Kelvin if you really want to show off how much you know about film colors. In addition to that, you can at any time grab this pick color from screen, which lets you sample any colors. So I can sample colors from our color wheel if I'm trying to be a smart ass about it. So those are a lot of new quick little sliders and switches, but that's just the beginning. The real power of this is how much further you can go with all this. So we could change this color wheel from things like monochromatic to analogous colors. And you can see it's helping us to set up this little three color palette here without really having to think about it. We could even go tetrad, which is a cool word by itself. So it's a really good way to pick color palettes without having to really have a background in color theory. And you can just kind of get your first color and go from there and get some interesting little colors. And you can do a lot more. Let's just go back to free. And you'll notice since I was doing this different color option, there's these extra bubbles and over here it says four. So we could just delete all those. And if I want to create a custom one, what I could do is grab a color. So let's just grab this red and then I'm going to press this plus and that's going to make a second color down here. And I could grab something else that I like. Maybe it's all within the red family. So we'll go get another one. Let's grab another one. Maybe we'll grab more bright orange. And you can see as I adjust this, it will pull up all of them so we can really control and tweak our whole palette of colors. And let's just go one more. It's just, why not grab a, a light blue? And what's cool about this is I can select any of these colors. And then if I were to make a new material, it stores all this. So there's my color information. So I could quickly create a whole system of materials from this. One other new thing you can do is sample from a picture if we go to this tab. So if I grab a photo and I got all these cool photos I took from the Pinball Hall of Fame in Las Vegas. Let's just grab that one that looks pretty fun and load that. I can use that same little plus icon to create extra little points of color and then I could sample colors from this photo if I really like the color palette that I had going on there. And now I could also even save these. I'll save these as pinball colors. I can bring these down here as a group. So I'll call this new colors. And you can really store all this stuff. And again, if I was making a new material, open that up, any of these tabs, it's still storing all of that information. So there's my pinball colors. I can drag it to my color up here. And then if I want to make further changes, I could pull that. You can see it gives you this little preview of where your color was and what your color is going. And there's a couple extra little switches. There's this color mixer, if we want to tweak it a little further as well as this color swatches, which has the parts of what we were just talking about that lets you customize and save out different presets of colors. So if you wanna store some colors or you're working on a big job with different people and you need to send some color palettes, you could do a lot more with this. It's really quick to work with, a really nice addition, and it'll really speed up your workflow and let you do things like color theory straight in Cinema 48. It's a fun new feature, and if you want to check out some more new features of R17, you can check out some of my other videos like the updates to the Metaball system, the new Take system, which is a really huge one. Be sure to check that out, as well as the new Pen Tool and other new updates. You can check those out by clicking those thumbnails right there. And if you have any questions on this Cinema 4D tutorial or any other videos, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella, and you can hashtag those R17. And be sure to subscribe on YouTube to get weekly videos. And if you want to help out with the show, you can help support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. 
you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see See you at the next video.